going on, everybody? This is Coach Jan, and welcome to Tai Chi to the People, presented by Justice for Hire. And Justice for Hire is a cinematic universe that we're making with a community where anyone can join the cast. Uh, we're producing a show from this cinematic universe, which is essentially our app. Um, so from the app, you can join the cast and things that you create, missions you go on in character uh, can be placed into the show. And we've been producing this show for about three years. So um, you're welcome to join anytime. And Tai Chi, of course, is my favorite thing to share. <clears throat> uh, I coach the US Tai Chi Push Hands team. And that's the grappling wrestling side of uh, Tai Chi. And every week we come together to train Tai Chi on uh, Justice for Hires Tai Chi to the People. And we always dedicate our training to a noble cause of the week. And this week is Meals for Unity. You can donate to them if you like the class. Uh, no pressure to donate. Uh, anyone can train, but if you like the class, donate directly to them at Meals for Unity or go to Meals for Unity, uh, their website. Uh, and you can Google that <laughs> to find it specifically. And Mark just joined us. Mark is a phenomenal Tai Chi practitioner. And uh, we're going to do some Tai Chi right now. More specifically, I had to call my father for this one. Uh, this is the Nagong exercise from the 12 Yin set. We're going to continue our 12 Yin set training today. And uh, this exercise is I got to look it up yet. Yeah. <laughs> it's a uh, sparrow pierces the clouds. I think language is super important. And I always tell people language is really, really important. Um, but language and the use of language, it's, it's really important when you start to share, when you sort of build things with the community. If you have stuff in your own toolbox and you, know, you have different ways of organizing it, that's fantastic. I always forget the name of this exercise. Um, <clears throat> but that being said, I think it's super important to remember these names. Um, and Sparrow Pierces the Clouds is what we're going to do today. It is probably the most dynamic of any of the Nagong exercises, period. Um, so I'm really excited to do this with you. Um, if you have trained with us previously, you can check out all the previous videos of this series where we're going into the details of the Nagong. Um, and specifically, like very precise details of the 12 Yin set, the Nagong through the Wu style. Um, so with that said, we will warm up uh, fairly uh, briefly with all of the exercises we've done before, but if you want to have a more uh, detailed experience, uh, you check out those previous videos. Also note that at the time of filming this video, I have not done exercises one, two, and three, which are um, golden tortoise, embracing the one, and uplifting the golden bowl, or holding the golden bowl, another way of uplifting the golden bowl. Um, so have not done those, uh, but I will when we get to the end of this series. So I'll, I'll start from the end because we, we do that so often uh, in our training already, our Tai Chi to the People training, that I didn't feel like it, uh, it was the most necessary for us to start with uh, all these exercises. So th that will happen and I'll, they'll all be numbered in order. That being said, let's do it. <clears throat> all right. This. All right. If you have any trouble seeing, let me know. Turn my phone over so I don't see people texting me. All right. <clears throat> so we're going to start with our gilded pillar stance, feet shoulders apart in parallel, and an imaginary string lifting you from the top of the head. You feel the lift, tailbone drops, knees soften. More specifically, you feel the lift and you should feel a cascading relaxation down the spinal cord, each vertebrae getting farther and farther apart, dropping all the way down to the tailbone so that if you find that your butt is sticking out, the tailbone drops straight down. The way I just did that looks like a tuck. It looks like I'm tucking my hips in, but I'm actually not dropping straight down. If you find yourself doing a tuck here, that means you have too much tension in the groin area and then you're holding the muscle to create this shape. So you got to soften back a little bit. Keep the weight on the heels. Center of each heel. You don't want to go so far back on the heel to draw an edge, which will put undue pressure on the heel. You want to kind of keep it in the center of the heel. Soften the knees. Weight mostly favoring the inside of the legs, like a pyramid structure. Pressure on the inside to create a very strong curves. Palms facing down, special tension on the middle finger of each hand. Mouth closed, tongue on the ceiling of the mouth, very subtle, slight tension. The anus. Inhale, drawing the breath in. 
with the belly, specifically to the lower dot chin, about three finger lengths below your belly button, which is three or two inches below. <clears throat> and when I say below, I mean on the outside, the breath work is actually, the visualization is in the centermost point on the body aligned with that area. So count three down and then go to your center line awareness. That center line has been established by this imaginary string. So everything, your entire body surrounds this center line. It's like a pillar of awareness. When you breathe into the lower down chin, any one of the seven chakras, that's the second, the orange one. When you breathe into this area, you want to see, feel, and experience the breath as a color gathering the attention, the visualization gathering in brighter here. When you exhale, push up, follow the breath up and then split it at the shoulder so the awareness goes down the arms to the palms and fingertips. That enters your beyond. Exhaling down, inhaling up. Exhale, wash the color through the palms of the fingertips, uplifting heaven, inhaling, exhaling down, inhaling up, exhaling down. Breathing formula two, inhaling up, breathing deeper, exhaling down, inhaling up. Breathing formula three, inhaling up, exhale, wash out, inhaling at one, even deeper two, even deeper three. Four, inhaling up, even deeper, even deeper, even deeper, one big breath, exhalation just as long as inhalation, Maybe even a little bit longer. One more time, this time, why don't I more the muscle while using the inhalation, the four stage inhalation? Belly, obliques, lower back, and then belly. So, stage one belly, obliques, lower back, the entire belly. Exhaling down, hollow fist rested right on the hips. I'll lower this camera so you get better view. Exhaling down, pelvis rotates on the femur. Inhale, breath pulls you to the side and up, eyes on the belly button. Exhaling. Inhale, breath pulls you up, eyes on the belly button. Exhaling down. Even deeper. One more. And reverse it. Drop the arms down. Inhale, breath lifts the wrist. Exhale, wash the palms and fingertips. Inhale, draw them. Wrist back, exhale, hands flow down, they soften the back. Notice that my, I had a little tension here, I just dropped it out. The tension potentially could always be there. <laughs> you always want to work on getting better at recognizing it and dropping it out, releasing and leaving only the tension necessary to hold the posture, whatever posture that is. One more time, inhaling up. This is a transition move, but it's, an, it's called an attention circuit. Inhale, draw the wrist back. Exhaling, the breath's going through the fingertips. As, as if the fingertips are on the, the back the muscles, from head down to the heel, softening. Wherever the fingers point, that's the part of the body on the back that softens. A circuit from your attention here to here. And exercise one, the inside of the go. Exhale, wash the color out the hands. Inhale, gather, gather palms to the sky or the ceiling, hollow fists, and exhale, pelvis rotates on the femur. Roll the shoulders, rise up and down, elbows in front of the eyes, straight line from the top of the head to the tailbone. Inhale through the belly. Exhale, wash the color down the legs and to the ground. Belly. Through the lungs, strengthening the lungs. Inhale up the belly. Come down the arms with the palms of the 
back. Exhale, hands float down. You should feel like feathers floating down. And then inhale, breath is pulling the hand behind you into a diamond shape and swallow back. Hold the breath. Swallow the saliva twice. Exhale, push the breath through the wrist and the wrist massage down the back. Inhale, pulling the hands up. Right hand to the solar plexus area. Left hand just below the Lower down 10 and hold the breath. Swallow the saliva twice. In the second swallow, trace the sensation all the way down. Let the mind take over and let that the mind fall into the lower down 10 area from that swallow. Once it touches, hits that area like a ripple in a pond or slow motion explosion, <laughs> inhale and bring the left hand to the collarbone, right hand is turned, both palms facing down, exhale. This is Jade Rabbit watching the moon. Inhale, one, two, three, four, two. Exhale, one, two, three, four, two. Again, for any of these exercises, the greater details, I'll bring you the full videos. Three more. Stage one, even deeper two, exhale. 
and one in the user chain. Draw the color at once, gets brighter, and dancing, flatter. Draw more at White crane spreads his talons. So we're going to grab a crane fist here and inhale. You can stand if you'd like, massage the temple, keep the elbows down. Notice how my elbows are a little up. I just soften even more so I can minimize the tension in my shoulders. Exhale, pushing forward, hitting up. Gentle grab, massaging the temple, hands floating down. Exhale, forward, in and up. Four more. Staying seated now. Inhaling up, even deeper, pulling apart, eyes on the middle finger of the right hand. This clever cat catches the mouse. Remember, when the hands catch, they're 45 degrees apart, angled not flat out and not flat facing each other. Catch the mouse. Inhaling one, in two, or three, four. Side. Three more. Stay seated for this. All one. Two, hold the breath. Snapping the whip left and right. Inhale up, exhale, eye and middle finger. Attention on the wrist. Color visualization pushes from the belly to the wrist. Inhaling, drawing in. And on these moments, I just caught myself, and this is not just for this exercise, it applies to all of them. I caught myself doing this quickly. And I often catch myself doing this quickly. A little reposition of the hand when someone grabs your wrist, getting break, going against the thumb and getting a dominant position on top of their wrist. That's what this moment is. And when I go too quickly here, it's a slippery slope. We'll get to the main exercise soon, but I just want to emphasize how important it is that the breath motivates, the attention and breath motivates, and that the sensitivity and your awareness is just as powerful, just as focused here as it is everywhere else. The focus may be different, but it should be of, of a similar quality. We want high, high quality focus and conducting the breath, pushing it out and pulling it in through the hands, through manifested as this color visualization. When you don't do that, I was just watching a Shaolin monk, a former teacher of mine yesterday, um, and his form looks brittle. He's getting older and his form looks brittle. And that's because you can see the mind through these movements. You can see when someone doesn't use their mind and so when someone does use their mind and when they whip their mind out and when they just put their hand out. Um, and it's not just fast twitch, twitch muscle movements, it's the breath work, it's the visualization, it's your attention. Your attention is something that you can see. You have to train yourself to see other people's intentions and you have to be able to see yours. So 
If I see myself doing this, I know that my hand, while I know I want to flick quickly when I'm doing this in real life, in a live martial arts competitive sparring um, moment, what I really want to do here is slow it down so that it's intentional. One more on your side. And now, this exercise I called last week giant bear pushes away. That is inaccurate. This is not the bear. There is a the bear. I, I made a reference to it last week. Um, this is actually called white ape pushes it away. So ape and bear, not the same thing. <laughs> so that being said, all everything that I said last time, mechanically, you can still reference, but the name is actually, and I'll change the name of the video to white eight pushes it away. Remember, you're inhaling, turning the waist. If you find yourself turning the hips, cautious of the hip pulling your kneecap. To avoid that, you have to maintain and create distance. You have to consciously open the hip and leave the knee behind so that you're so you don't get the pull of the knee. That means you have to stabilize the knee and try to hold it solid or even push it a little more forward as you're turning the hip to compensate. So just cautious there. But the emphasis should be first on the waist because waist power and hip power are two different sources of power and you want to be able to utilize them both. A good measure this time we're going to the variation also pull again inhale it a little deeper and exhale inhale one turn the waist deeper two exhale one more each side All right, here we go. Sparrow pierces the cloud. <clears throat> From white ape pushes it away, you have your switch blade hand, the hand that massaged your, massage just beneath the solar plexus, right on the line of the rib and the, the muscle, and switch blade it out to protect your lower gait. You have the striking hand, the hand that's pushing, <clears throat> pushing or striking. It could be a push, it could be a strike. Uh, difference there is an intention oftentimes. So you have this moment here, the bottom hand is going to come up, the blocking hand comes up. As the blocking hand comes up, the pushing hand relaxes. So now the pushing hand is flat and the bottom hand is going to be flat facing the sky, other hand facing down. This arm that's is essentially rested on the extended arm. <clears throat> so when you find yourself on the extended arm, you're going to inhale and pull across the body. The breath is pulling in through the middle finger and the hand of the extended arm. And your extended arm should feel like it's supporting all the weight. So now you have your mind holding two different sensations at once. One arm is supporting all the weight, the other arm is, is near dead weight. It is relaxed and it's, it's very much rested on the extended arm. As you inhale, and note that you'll keep your head forward the entire time. Your eyes will move, but the head will not turn. <clears throat> I will stay locked on the extended arm's middle finger. Notice that as you turn the waist, the arm that is dead weight, this, the very relaxed arm, is going to naturally slide. It's going to naturally slide here. As a matter of fact, it slides to the point of almost pulling. Look at my shoulder, my shoulder blade of this arm. It extends, it's as if I'm stretching. You've probably seen these exercises. After you do some weights, you stretch the shoulder. And one of the notes I always give people is keep your shoulder down. Rather than lifting it up, keep the shoulder down and let the scapula disappear into the upper back. So that's a super important note here. You're keeping the shoulder down and you're almost like you're stretching this shoulder. It's a very subtle stretch when you turn to your right side.
You can also stand on this in the beginning as well. So you can inhale, stand. Now the bottom hand, the extended hand, is going to pull in and turn toward your body, while the other hand, the rest of the hand, is going to activate, become alive, and push with a drilling motion, exhaling out. Inhaling, the same thing is happening again. I am the middle finger of the extending arm, exhaling out. And this is Sparrow pierces the clouds, and we'll get into even more detail in a moment. Inhale, the breath is motivating the movement, pulling the color in through the extended arm, and then exhale, pushing the color out through the once dead weight arm, which is now becoming the extended arm. When you push out, you're going to be on a 45 degree line from either hip. So I'm 45 degrees, my left arm from my left hip, 45 degrees out. My arm is not locked or straight, it's extending through the curve, the concept we often talk about here, meaning that the elbow is down. We have a lot of roundedness in the arm, the middle finger is facing the sky, the ceiling. And we're going to do our best to extend that curve as much as possible without locking the arm. Additionally, if you're really into martial arts, if you're playing with other people, you may want to be very conscious and cautious. I recommend conscious and cautious of your finger position. These exercises, while they're wonderful for health, and I recommend for health benefits to open the palm and feel the circulation of the palms and fingertips, from martial perspective, that, that's a very bad habit. So you want to protect your fingers so you don't get caught in people's clothing and that you jam, break, or dislocate your fingers. So you have oftentimes hiding the thumb here and for this posture, this position, I really kind of touch every now and then. I touch here to remind myself that this posture, if I'm really fighting, if I'm really playing, grappling, et cetera, that I have to keep this posture tight, um, but I don't practice it too tight. I just remind myself that if I do get close to someone, that I'm going to need to do that. So here, and again, the inside hand facing the rib cage. Notice how as one comes up, the other one goes down. Up and down, palm facing up, inhale. I am the middle finger of the extended arm. You can stand as you inhale, but as you exhale, sink and drill. The drilling is right here. It's waist, it's dropping the weight, and it's turning the palm. The breath work spirals through. So your breath visualization spirals through the palm and fingertip. Inhaling, coming up. Exhale. Inhale, the higher middle finger. Exhale. I'll do this from a 45 degree angle so you can see a slight variations or see the difference from the left. Inhale. Again, head stays straight. And it's great work after the eyes as well. Again, Tai Chi has multiple visual infrastructures layered on top of each other. So the reason this exercise is one of the most complicated Nagong exercises I've ever encountered is because there's a lot happening with the body mechanic. The body mechanic is, is one of the most Kung Fu, <laughs> like really drilling Kung Fu type movement. Um, and so you really want to get that sensation in the body, the physical, um, the multiple circles working in tandem. And the tighter the circle, the greater is the centrifugal force. So you have all these circles working together. The arms are moving, the waist is whipping, and you, boom, you have this wonderful movement. But if you only focus on the body mechanic, then you miss all the other important things that are, are arguably are as equal, equally important, if not more important. So you want to really focus on drawing the color visualization. Again, the breath work. You, as you inhale, you visualize the color like a vacuum cleaner pulling through the soft part of the arm. Inhale, you're pulling it through the soft part of the arm. Rather than the top hard part, you want to go into the soft, 
part on the bottom and then right into the belly. That's where you're pulling that color in through. And then as you exhale, you're pushing it out and emphasizing on the top part of the arm as it spins all the way through the fingertips and goes right through the palm. You wanna push your breath visualization about an inch or two beyond the palms and fingertips. Anytime, pushing it through, inhale coming up. So you want the mind to go beyond the body here. And that's something some people might scoff at that, that concept, that idea of the mind going beyond the body. Your mind can go beyond the body in an instant. And all you do is look at something. <laughs> you look at anything, your mind is, is on that thing. So as one of the, you can look at a chair and do your best to feel like that's a neuro-linguistic programming exercise. Look at a chair and feel how it feels to be the chair and ask yourself those questions. That's a great exercise, really, really powerful stuff. Uh, but one of the easiest ways to see where your mind goes is just to watch something. If you can pull yourself out of a moment where you're actually watching a show or looking at your phone or looking at a screen, uh, your mind, there, there's, there's something very powerful happening between your eyes and that screen. And so your attention has shifted to another place. And it's really important to recognize that your attention can shift anywhere you want it to. So here, we're using the attention, we're making it almost like a spear. And you wanna push that attention out you can even think of the shape of a spear and you want to push it out as you drill. You spin the spear as you push the attention out of the palm. Inhale, draw it in. And again, there's a counterbalance to it. This hand right here is incredibly important. It's pulling in and not pulling in the hard sense of grabbing an arm and pulling it. It is essentially waving in. Look at all the surface area that's at work here. It's not just the palm, it's the forearm as well. It's the dropping of the elbow. You have the compression, compression of the armpit area. So you're open and then you're pulling in. So you have this entire wave. As a matter of fact, I would even say as a note, an extra note, to keep the shoulder blade going forward even as you pull in which is a mechanic, I'm gonna take one arm away from the side here. Inhale, exhale. So I'm pulling in, pulling in here. And if you'd like to keep the emphasis on the circulation, this is a very, very specific, very specific, um, and, and, and I'd, even, I'd go as far as to say, this is a higher level note. This is a higher level note because the roundedness of the back is, is going to keep the circulation flowing uh, faster to the palms and fingertips. It's called opening or closing the valves. Um, so if you maintain that when you pull out and then drop the arm, you'll have a different sensation. You should experiment the, with this on your own. So the experiment would be pulling the elbow in versus expanding it as you pull the hand and forearm in. Those are two different variations. They're very, very subtle. Inhaling, exhale, pulling in. Paying a little closer attention to myself as I do this, really evaluating myself, I find that I tend to keep the distance, the elbow away from the rib cage, but I have directly experienced myself pull the elbow in. As you can see, it's now directly on my body or the, my bicep is on my body. My elbow is not uh, directly on the body, but the, the bicep is on the body, meaning that the elbow is closer to the body uh, and my shoulder blade, the scapula is coming out and it's closing. So just an important note. And I know we have a, 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 another guest on here. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Uh, the questions will only make everybody better. Again, this is piercing, sparrow pierces the clouds. Inhale, drawing in, drawing color in. Okay, so now we're gonna to get to doing it seated. And what happens when you do it seated is you take away one overt layer of power, uh, meaning the sinking motion. This sinking motion is really, really important. It's something that a lot of people understand because it's so obvious. Um, so, you know, if you're a boxer, you understand what it means to drop and throw that punch uh, and really get your weight behind the punch as you drop down. 
So uh, these overt things are easy to understand. It is more subtle uh, and therefore more challenging to understand maintaining the idea of the drop without the drop. So it really becomes more about inner mechanics and there is a subtle drop. It's really, really subtle, but again, the smaller the circle, the greater the centrifugal force. So yeah, I can see people, I've seen people drop really hard and not be able to do a push that a, that a, a more seasoned practitioner, um, I, dare I say master, would boom, be able to do that and knock someone farther back. Uh, and this isn't magic, these are, this is, you know, this, this is physics. So we're gonna stay seated and we're going to still do our best to maintain the concept of the drop, the downward idea it's called, as we do these exercises. So one of the things that I'm doing here is softening my tailbone intentionally to compensate for the drop not being there. Meaning that when I'm here, a little, so it's just smaller now. And it should get smaller and smaller until it's almost invisible. Just because someone can't see it doesn't mean it's not there. So you wanna really make sure that you're working on it because you know it's there. And then you can test these. You can, a great way to test just this motion, you can break this, this whole exercise down to many different applications. But a great way to test this drilling is to get on a tree to get a tree or I recommend trees. So trees are my favorite thing. You can get a wall, um, but essentially it's just work on this motion. Put your fingers on the wall in a similar way I'll put my fingers on this bookshelf. And then you just take, go from the distance of your fingers to the wall and just exhale, sink and push in. There's another exercise that we'll do right now just to give you the, uh, a clearer idea of that concept. And then we'll get right back to the uh, other exercise. The Nagel drill is right here. Exhale, yeah. And if you're a Yang style practitioner, this is one of the first Yang style movements, Tai Chi movements I ever learned, period. Inhaling up, exhaling down. And this little wave, this wave right here is the same wave, of course, different direction, but it's a similar concept. Drilling in, inhaling up. And another note is that you should be able to do the drill both ways. I will drill left and right on, on both arms on a tree. And that's because there is, there's the, the difference. You may, you may need one or the other when you're doing grappling and you wanna create some distance from somebody. So you may need to push someone back like this or you may need to push someone back like that. So this is, from outside to in, inhaling up. When outside, meaning the elbow is up, to in, elbow comes back in and down. Outside to in. And I'm, I'm using the elbow as an obvious note here. Obvious thing to look at because eventually you wanna minimize the elbow movement. Versus here. Inhaling, the elbow is in and it goes out. Again, the elbow still stays down, but because of the position of the hand, it is spinning outward. So whether you do the inward on a tree or the outward on a tree, they're both the drilling motion. You really wanna get the sensation of both of them. Notice how my hip shoots out to do the outward one versus my hip spinning in to do the inward one. And there's a difference between front leg and back, uh, rear leg and back leg. So you want to be able to figure out how to do for yourself the inward or the outward, um, spinning the hip in and up or spinning the hip out. And it's just the way that you whip it. And back to the details here, inhale, drawing in, exhaling out. So when you're in this position seated, another dimension of power, if you, since you're not standing, you want to really dig for whatever you can get to generate more power in a smaller space. So now you're going to really start to access the hip. So before we were emphasizing the waist and how the turning of the waist 
helps the arms, the, the, the relaxed arm, pull the extended arm out of the joint, slight stretch it, and then exhale, pull it back in as you push out. And that's on the waist. And you can keep the waist for a while, but then I recommend starting to use the hip. And remember, when you use the hip, you have to keep the knee in place. Otherwise, you're pulling the knees in this stance, which over time is really not that great. So you want to do your best to open the hip, meaning that the knee either stays in place or gently pushes forward and down as the hip turns. My hip is turning this way. So you want to minimize the knee movement. So my hip and my waist are working. Exhaling, hip and waist. Inhale, hip and waist working. Exhale, hip and waist. The great thing about these sessions that we're doing in here with the extra detail is that we get to really emphasize, really feel what's starting to happen in the waist and in the organs. You spend enough time doing the same thing over and over again, your attention to detail is going to expand and deepen. So you wanna feel what's happening even in the organs, the, the gentle massage of the intestines, of the kidneys, the liver, the stomach, how the joints feel as you're stretching the arms here. Remember this, this gentle slide is a, is a drag. You're practicing the concept of sticking, which is a very, one of the most Tai Chi specific concepts I've encountered across any martial art I've done. I've done a lot of them. Tai Chi is the only one that really emphasizes sticking. Chi Sao from Wing Chun also has sticking, but uh, the sticking, break, you break sticking for the striking. And in Tai Chi, or more specifically, there's a lot more, especially Wu style, riding. You're riding your opponent's pressure. Riding the pressure, and you're practicing that right here. You're riding your own arm. This soft, relaxed arm is just pulling out, you feel it sticking, and then you activate. A lot of times, again, Chi Sao, for example, you stick and then break. So here you stick and then you maintain the stick as you push and pull. Sticking, 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 exhaling, pushing and pulling, but still sticking. The bottom hand pulling back, connected to the top hand, rolls right over. You wanna have this level of intimacy with your movements, with any person. You wanna be able to follow, place yourself in any position, and redirect the pressure. And I really recommend, if you can, getting that focus again, the color visualization in the belly, pushing into the palms of the fingertip, behind the middle finger of the arm, and really driving the visualization like a drill through the hand as you're doing this. We've added the hip, we've taken away the drop, Let's do six more. Final notes here. There's a lot of notes. I could talk all day about this. Think about a little bit of an uppercut upward with the heel of the palm. So you're just drilling it outward and up. You drill, 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 and finish upward. Inhaling, deep. Exhale, drill, drill, and finish upward. I'm doing it. I'm making this little pop more overt here so that you can see how it would apply with the shoulder blade disappearing into the back and the hand pushing up, whether it's on a chin or it's on a chest or especially on floating ribs or on the solar plexus, 
if you're playing push hands and you get this moment on somebody, especially timed with their breathing at the apex of their inhalation or exhalation, when they're completely deflated and you give them that little pop, it's going to give, it's going to make them think, hiccup in their, in their thought pro process for a moment. And that one little hiccup can put you in an advantageous position. You pop them and you do your next move. Ideally, you've strategized what your next move is going to be from that pop. So this little moment here is really, really important. That little end, pushing the shoulder blade in, making sure that the scapula has disappeared all the way into the back as much as possible without overextending yourself. So just make sure it's going and make sure you angle it upward. And inhale, draw it in. Exhaling down to uplifting heaven. One more. Big two fists apart in parallel. Breath lifts the wrists. Wrists go behind the body. Fingers reaching for the wall behind you. Chest out, hips forward. Where the toes exhale, butt back, fingers forward. Soften the knees. Inhale up. Fingers to the back wall. Chest and ceiling. Hips forward. Where the toes exhale, butt back, fingers forward. Soften the knees. Inhale down. Fingers back. Chest up. Hips forward. Where the toes. Exhale, butt back, fingers down. Inhaling out. One foot forward, the heel touches the ground, the toe stays up, and exhale. Weight is mostly on the back leg. Touch the toes, hold up, inhale deep. Exhale, go up, pull yourself in a little bit more. Inhaling up, drawing the color into the belly. Exhale, push the color into the hands as you fold over the leg. Switch legs, hold the leg, toes. Inhale, draw the color in. Exhale, push the color down the leg as you pull yourself in a little more. So notice that we have two paths here. Inhaling, draw the color into the hands, switching legs 45 degrees out. Exhale, pushing the color through the fingertips as you touch the toes. Inhale, draw the color in. Exhale, pull yourself in as you push the color through the leg. The extended leg, inhaling up, switch sides. Exhale to the hands. Hold. Inhale to the belly. Exhale down the leg. Pull yourself in. Inhaling up. Switch legs 90 degrees. Exhale down. Hold. Inhale deep. Exhale to the leg. Pull yourself in. One more time on the other side. 90 degrees. Exhale down. Hold. Inhale deep. Exhale to the leg. Inhaling up onto your toes, exhaling down the legs. Inhaling up, turn to your right side. Exhale down. Inhaling up, turn to the left side. Exhaling down. Inhaling up over the head, down the back. Down. Keep slapping up. The soft part of the down the part. Inside soft part. Down the outside hard part, switch sides, up the inside soft part, down the outside hard part, one more time. Over the shoulder, slap it. And slap it in the backs of the hands, down the back. Inhaling up, ocean of blood returns to the source. Exhaling down, just the fingertips lift up and inhale. Exhaling down. Two more. One more. Put the hands together. Exhaling it around. And tap. Massage. Around pectoral major. Around perimeter of your large pectoral muscle, exhaling, massaging deeper, 
pushing color into the wounds, and then floating rev up. One, two, three, four, five. Again, other side. Four fingers on the sternum for the immune system, up and down. Hook shape on either side of your collarbone. Very strong pressure. Open the palms and going, looking up. When you look up, do your best to feel all the reproductive organs relaxing. So you wanna just feel everything drop, looking up, and you're gonna massage from the collarbone the strong pressure up past the chin. And then the back of the neck. Then extend off very strong pressure. For the hormones, hooking under the lip and then the thumb right here, squeeze one, two, three, four, and switch. One, two, three, four. Rubbing the hands together, going up on the face to the side, release. Up on your face to the side, release. Up on the face to the side, release. Ears, strong pressure. This is for sleep, helps you sleep. Massaging. And then again, for the immune system, in index finger and middle finger, up, over, down, under, or strong pressure. Up, over, down, under. Up, over, down, under. Up, over, down, under. Fingers to the scalp, front to back, back to front, front to back. Back to front, massaging. Front to back, back to front, slapping. Front to back, back to front. Hollow fist, gentle banging. Front to back, back to front. Grab the scalp and knead it like dough. So one, two, three, and then grab another patch. One, two, three. Really move the muscle underneath the scalp and the bones that comprise your skull. They move every time you talk very slightly. Reverse it, so stretch them, move them. Four fingers at the top of the forehead, massage, one, two, three, four, five, reverse it. Temples, and reverse it. Under the eyes, and reverse it. For your heart, middle finger right here, and massage, two, three, four, five. Above and below the gums, one, two, three, four, five. Switch, one, two, three, four, five. On the side, above the gums, one, two, three, four, five. Feel the pressure points below the gums on the side. One, two, three, four, five. And then tongue. Mm -hmm. Reverse it. Flick the fingers out, thumbs out. One, two, three. Grab one, two, three. Press and hold. And drill on the palm with the thumb. One, two, three. Every time you do Tai Chi, you want to give yourself a nice self massage, massaging out the entire palm and then other side, press and hold and drill one, two, three, and then make a circle with the thumb, second circle larger, third circle the largest, tapping up. And then close the eyes, inhale, white light to the belly, exhale, spread the whole body. Really visualize the light flooding your whole body, every cell, all the bones, the organs. Inhale, white light. Again, wash it out to the whole body. Inhale, roll it from the toes to the head, up the body as you inhale. The tidal wave. Exhale, roll it down the back, head to heels. Like a waterfall, white light. Inhale, white light to the left side, foot to head. Exhale, roll it down to the right side, head to foot. Inhale, white light to the belly. Exhale, wash it down the legs into the ground. I go down to the ground with the attention go down and come back up and around like a fountain in reverse, making a big bubble of white light around you. Visualize it, see it all around you. And one more breath, white light to the belly. Exhale, push it to the top of the head like a fountain. Let it expand outward, expanding your awareness. Surrounding you like a bubble. And have gratitude for the body, the space that you're in good people in your life. And thank you guys so much for training. As I mentioned before, this is uh, Justice for Hire's Tai Chi to the people. And uh, every week we dedicate this to a, a noble cause. There's never, uh, anyone can train all the time, um, never a, a, a requirement to donate. But if you want to donate, you can donate to Meals for Unity and you go right to their Instagram page or you can go to 
um, their website. And uh, this is justiceforhire.app. You can go to justiceforhire.app right now and join the community, be part of the cast, the cinematic universe we're building, a show we're producing as a, as a global community. Uh, it's like hire a hero or become one to get paid. It's pretty fun stuff. I'm Coach Jan. You can always uh, follow me on my Coach Jan's Tai Chi tai, uh, YouTube channel. So I have lots of stuff on there, um, especially for the sport of Tai Chi push hands for which I coach the U.S. team. So love you guys. I'm going to press stop on this. And if you have any questions, please ask in the comments. Uh, this will be on the uh, my YouTube channel and the Justice for Our YouTube channel as well. Love you guys.